allow me today to take you on a journey of biblical submission in its right context and that we see what the Lord really meant. So he says, submit yourself. So the word submit is not bondage, but it is a word of love. It is a word of protection. He starts with women because he says, as you submit, you're going to be protected. Because he says, submit to your own husband as unto the Lord. So in other words, a husband who, when you look at him, he looks like the Lord, such that it is easy to submit to that kind of a man. Because why? Jesus loved the church and he died for the church on that cross. And because of that type of a husband that is willing to love his bride in such a manner, it's easier for the bride to submit to that kind of husband. So he says, submit as a way of protection. Submit as a way to not defend yourself and that your husband rather will defend you. He says, submit as a posture of receiving love, not as a posture of you trying to be loved, but receiving love. Now, hear this. He says, submit because you are an object of love. You are an object of love, not the subject of love. The subject, when I was studying the difference between subject and object, a subject is the performer. And then the object is the receiver of the action. So in other words, let me read, write, read it to you the way I wrote it. A subject is a person, place, or things that performs the action, verb. And then it says, an object is a person, place, or things that receives the action. So the object receives the love. The subject gives the love. So he starts with the wife or the women because they are object of love. God's design and purpose for women was for them to be loved. It was just for them to be loved because he was portraying them as the bride. So he says they are objects of love. Um, now, but let it be the hidden man of the heart. You know, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of meekness, underline, meekness and a quiet spirit. So the verse says, every one of us must have, a, must have meekness and a quiet spirit. It's not only talking to women, it's talking to us as men because we are also the bride of Christ. So it says we must have meekness, then it says we must also have a quiet spirit. Note, it didn't say we must have a quiet mouth, but it said a quiet spirit. So in other words, you can be an extrovert and still have a quiet spirit. You can be talkative, but your spirit has peace. So he's not talking about not talking, rather he's talking about being peaceful. Sarah was one woman who was strong-willed, was one woman who knew who she is, and she was definitely not a, a carpet for Abraham to walk on. She was a leader in her own right. She knew her rights in Christ. So this woman, strong as she is, she also battled with how to fully submit to Abraham. Because she was also wise. And, and wise, I'll, I'll prove it to you now how wise she was. And so... She tried many a times to maneuver things in her own strength. Actually, for her to have a child when she was 90 years old, it wasn't that it took God 90 years to give Sarah a child, but it took 90 years for Sarah to come to a place of rest to allow God to do it for her. Every husband and wife, they must take their own cross. And the cross it's about denying yourself. Not denying your wife or denying your husband. It's not about the more oru mandla, the more mandla atia. It took it took God 
to take the children of Israel out of Egypt. The more something happens, the more Pharaoh was hardening his heart. So the more if you do it yourself, Sinatra, I did it my way, the more you push Mutuahau away from you. The more you, you say, I'm kitlam, kitlam, khaliki mutlu hetsi kia mulukis. Lukisa we not reborn. No, no, I give it to you. Lukisa. Reta kopana, cancelling session. He says, for we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. As Adam cried and said, Mpatel, bone of my bones to Eve. Jesus, when he looked at us, he said, bone of my bones. She shall be called church. Jesus said, you are mine. He redeemed us in our sins, in our backslidden state. He called us to himself. Angels ask, what is a man that you are so mindful of him? And then he said, you don't know who she is to me. Because it's the one who loves is the one who knows the price, not the one who is loved. He pays to love this person. Look at the next verse we, as we close. Go down. For this cause, a man will leave his father and mother. Pega, Zaza, Pega. He says, for this cause, a man will leave his father and mother, will be joined to his wife. Note, Bazalan, is not only leaving mother and father, but is joining to the wife that the two become one. The mathematics of God. Two become one. Two become one. Pega. He says, for this cross will leave father and mother. Meaning, Jesus on that cross, as the father said, as the father said, uh, Eloi, Eloi, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he was leaving his father. As Mary was looking there, crying he was also leaving his mother he will leave his father and mother and as he was there on the cross and the soldier pier pierced him on the side he was being joined unto his wife see it cost the lord a price for him to be joined to his wife and for him to redeem his wife it will it will cost you something it will cost you something for you to be joined with your wife husband will void them on the day he heard them then whatsoever proceeds out of her lips concerning her vows or concerning the bond of her soul next verse he says shall not stand and her husband have made them void the lord shall forgive her when jesus was hanging on the cross and all the vows peter had made and said all will forsake you but i will never forsake you as jesus was hanging on the cross and he said father forgive them for they don't know what they are doing he was voiding us of all the promises according to the law that we were making to god say lord we will serve you god we will do the ten commandments we will call, we will not do this we will not do that we will not do that and yet we fail then as he was on that cross, as a good husband to us, he voided that thing. He said, and the Lord will forgive. Ooh. That's the story of the gospel. 